Hello and welcome to this next session here. Uh, we'll be discussing the politics of parking. We've already seen the minister and got a feeling for some of the heated opinions that there are. It is, after all, just a year until the next election and already the battle lines are being drawn up. With this possibly being the last big opportunity to discuss some of the issues before the next election, we thought we'd bring together some of the parties to discuss parking from a political perspective. And I'm delighted to be welcomed this morning by Councillor Richard Davies from Grantham. Hello. Hello. Nice to be and here. And also uh, Councillor Ian Davy, confusingly, <laughs> from Brighton and Hove. Now, Ian, you're the Green Party, yep. and Richard, you're from the Conservative Party. Richard, if I could start off by asking you, what's your party's approach to parking policy? I think we found we've, we've missed the boat to a certain extent historically. I think we've allowed um, the agenda to be set not necessarily by the majority but the minority. I think moving forward now we're seeing a real change in direction and the Minister spoke about it this morning. Parking is no longer a stick issue, it's about a carrot issue and it's about how we can promote the economy using parking and also provide things like safety but it's, it's, it's very much now I think about economic. And is it in your area a, a political hot potato? Yeah, I mean, I, I took over as Highways Portfolio Holder for Lincolnshire uh, about 18 months ago. And we very recently brought in civilianised parking enforcement. For about eight years, there was a, an interregnum, as it's often called, with the police not doing anything. We're in a two-tier authority, so it was very difficult to get an arrangement. And we had a situation where parking had become a free-for-all. Um, it, it, failed really and our high streets particularly in the smaller market towns were clogged up and everybody had an opinion on it and even now it's extremely contentious I mean civilianized parking enforcement has been very effective don't get me wrong Ian if I could bring you in now in yes. Brighton and Hove also is parking a contentious issue or uh, absolutely, yes. It's, it's a very contentious issue. So I think Brighton and Hove, it's clearly very different from, from Lincolnshire, a small, condensed city, but immensely popular. And uh, you know, parking is, has been an issue there forever. Uh, some people would say it's just a, a new thing since the Greens come in. But I think people have a very short memory sometimes. And parking has always been very, very challenging in Brighton and Hove. It remains very challenging. Uh, but yeah, managing the demands upon yeah, a, a relatively small, urban area which was designed a long long time before the motor car and is not about to be re-engineered to you know, massively accommodate the motor car you know, it, it, it's, it's a real challenge now presumably it can't really be an issue that divides on party lines because parking is parking is that your experience Richard uh, I have to say you know as a, in a relatively rural fairly blue county uh, the car is frankly a, a bit of a status symbol we rely upon it the idea that we're going to start in, 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 the, in the walls of Lincolnshire, start jumping on buses and trains and trams and segways and various other things just isn't a reality. So for many people, it, it does divide along partisan lines. Cars are important. We cannot survive in Lincolnshire without them. And I think if there's a feeling sometimes that government is anti-car, then that does wind people up. In a sense, yes, you represent very different areas, aren't you? Because Brighton and Hove, although it has a very uh, rural hinterland, nonetheless, lots of people in a city, basically. Whereas in Grantham, you are talking about an area where people don't have a public transport alternative. They rely heavily on their cars in the sticks and have to do something with them in the town. Do you, do you therefore see, Richard, that uh, good parking management as a method of... of restraining traffic growth or, or a means of promoting the economy or is it in your sort of area simply something you have to do because of the nature of the rural nature of the it, area it, I would take Grantham as an example it's our second second biggest town it cannot be a coincidence that we've brought in parking enforcement and that the economy of the town is improving you know I know the national economy is improving but you know new shops are opening up I mean this is in conjunction with other investment but we are seeing that people are, are, are for people like, like me who live in villages on the outskirts, people are saying, we will go into Grantham now because we can. That's what parking enforcement has given us. And what sort of sensitivity is that, does that require? I mean, because a lot of people coming into town needing to park somewhere, how is that determining your parking policy? 
we have to, because we're a two-tier authority, we have to, the, the traditional wrestle with a bag of cats approach with borough councils, district councils and the county. But what you are finding, because money's tight, you are able to make quite mature decisions. And we're now starting to look at things, for example, in Lincoln, like park and ride, you know, taking it to the next level. But, you know, for a small district council, be under no illusion, you know, South Stephen is a good example there, annual revenue is 16 million pounds. They collect one or two million pounds, perhaps, from parking. So it's, it's incredibly political where that money goes to. Coming to you, Brighton and Hove, um, you're also a Green councillor. Presumably you're quite interested in actually encouraging use of public transport, of cycling, walking indeed, anything but actually using mm. the, the, the combustion engine. Well, it's all, it's all part of, of the mix, isn't it? And, and it is incredibly political. Just to go back to you, a question from a couple of questions ago. You know, e even though uh, previous administrations, be it, be it Labour or be it Conservative, have done things not too differently from us, yeah, parking is always an opportunity which I'm afraid political opposition find very, very difficult to resist. So, so I guess that's just probably just the, the reality of politics. But um, yeah, but back to the question about you know, promoting other, other, other means of getting around. Parking management is absolutely key to that, really. So you know, we need, need to be able to m minimize the impact of those who are driving into the city center. And good parking management is absolutely key to be able to do that. You hear all kinds of statistics about how many vehicles are on the road at any particular time are looking for somewhere to park. Uh, but you know, whatever, however many it is, if, if, if we can reduce that number and get people who, who are driving into the city, who are choosing to drive to the city, to a parking space sooner rather than later, that frees up space, it, yeah, it, it makes the streets less congested, it, it improves air quality, improves road safety, and, makes, and, and tries to make, and then starts to make all those other options much more attractive. So, so I, I think with regard to CCT enforcement particularly, yeah, for us that is a key method of keeping the arterial routes in, through the city centre free. If we do not have that opportunity, public transport will, will be impacted, will be adversely impacted, and then that starts to become a less attractive option. Why should somebody get a bus if it's stuck in the same traffic jam as everybody else? So yeah, it's, it's really important for encouraging your good, efficient public transport and safe walking and cycling. I can't emphasize enough how important that safety element right. is. Now, we heard from the minister earlier about the, the, the importance of natural justice, people's feeling that really they understood what parking's about, but they wanted it done fairly, and they, they didn't want to be victims of a, a, of a clinical system. Would you agree with that? Well, well absolutely. Any, any kind of enforcement has to be fair, and, and yeah, I think there's evidence that says, well, actually, it is fair, and if, if, if compliance is increasing, so we know that in Brighton Hove, compliance is increasing, the number of PCNs that are issued throughout the city is going down, despite the fact that the the amount of areas covered by a controlled parking zone are increasing every year. So I think that's indicative of the fact that yeah, the systems that we run yeah, in Brighton and Hove are fair and yeah, the, 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 the penalty system is fair. And, yeah, and, and okay, some people are always going to be unhappy if they get fined or if they get caught out. Let's look at some specifics because it was interesting when the minister spoke uh, we had quite an animated debate afterwards, some quite heated feelings, and particularly on the subject of CCTV. What's your own feeling from your own areas as to the significance of that as, a, as an issue of fairness, if nothing else? It's an issue of fairness, and there's a great philosophical debate to be had about whether or not CCTV are the right thing. But the, the pragmatic facts are, you know, in Lincolnshire we have 600 schools, for example, we have 22 civilian parking enforcement officers. There's no way we could ever give the public what they want. And I was at, last night I was talking with a group of parents at a local school who, who want enforcement around their school. There is no way we can do that with enforcement officers. So we either listen to kind of some of the privacy advocates who don't like it, and we, we listen to Eric Pickles who says it's a bad idea and do nothing, and our residents are unhappy and we have continued problems outside schools, or we accept that sometimes you need these powers that you may not want to always deploy. CCTV is, I completely agree, I think I'm a member of the Green Party, um, is one of those tools that we need to keep in the arsenal. What about, Ian, what about the need, um, I, I think it's generally accepted that there's a very small minority of overzealous uh, agents and bailiffs. 
How important do you think politically is it to keep them in check while not inhibiting them from doing their job? So ba bailiffs, you mean from chasing yeah, fines? Traffic, in, in, in a private context, bailiffs or, or, or conventional traffic wardens. Um, well, well, certainly the, 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 the civil enforcement officers, as I believe that they're now called, who, who, who work for us or through, through our contractors, you know, we, we feel they are ambassadors for, for the city, really. So however much we might like to distance ourselves from them, and of course they all, they've all got Brighton Hope on their, on, on, on their uniforms. So yeah, how, yeah, how, how they interact with the general public is, is absolutely vital. And I think yeah, we're pretty happy with the way they do that. And yeah, I think they're, they're well, they get involved in many things that go beyond just enforcement of parking. And you know, I think that's absolutely important. And any, any agents who are acting, who are seen to be acting on behalf of the local authority, yeah, how they behave yeah, is absolutely vital because it reflects upon the so, local authority. So in your view then, how should parking policy be, be developed in the future to make it more user friendly while still fit for purpose? Um, I, I think PR is, is a really, really big, big part of it. Yeah, helping people to understand why it's important um, and, and I think dealing with people's frustrations. So I, I think you know, in, in Brighton Hove, the frustrations of people's driving experience to the city will come from queuing to get into the city and queuing to get into a car park. Um, and that, and, and for, for us, that actually dealing with those are the most important thing. Um, you know, so, so we want people's experience to be in the city to be positive, however they're traveling into or through the city. So having a transport system that works for everybody, whether they live there, whether the businesses or whether the visitors is absolutely vital and parking is, is a part of that whole mix. So for the city to work, that whole transport package needs to work. Richard, what would you say on that issue? Where would you like things? Where do you think things should go to, to be more effective? I, I, I completely agree with everything that was said there. I think the issue we have at the moment is that parking is seen as an end solution in of itself, rather than what are we trying to achieve? We want to get a better flow, a better churn of people into our towns and cities, so therefore parking is a way of doing it. The problem we've got is that while local authorities rely on it for revenue, to subsidise budgets, they are never going to look at it objectively. And that really is the, the barrier we've got to get across. You know, some local authorities, 10, 15, 20% of their, their spendable income is raised from parking. So they're never going to be able to look at it objectively and say, it's not about the money, it's about where do we get people, where do we need the people to go, and, and, and you're absolutely right, the frustration be that with trying to park, because buying a ticket can be quite frustrating, can't it? And that annoys people. And then if there is an issue, dealing with it quickly. So it's interesting. We have unfortunately only got you two gentlemen representing the, the, the national party. So obviously we have the Tory view and we have the, the Green view, but we're lacking the Labour and Liberal Democrat in, 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 uh, input up here. But it's interesting that two parties that are quite often diametrically opposite in their views of things or agreeing with each other. Mm. Is there an area of parking policy where in fact the Greens and the Conservatives disagree? First of all, I have a good ask you as a Green. I, I, I must admit, I, 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 I'm not well versed enough with, with cons Conservative Party policy, um, so I, I can only really, really talk about you know, what, what we do, and, but actually kind of locally we, we do get quite a lot of agreement with the other parties because they, they all recognise the, 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 the challenges that we face and, and you know, there's something that we all have to deal with. Um, so, but our, our approach is very much about, in Brighton Hove, about promoting choice and making all transport options an attractive option for, for, for people. So, so it's very noticeable, you know, people who live in the centre of Brighton Hove, car dependency is very low, car ownership is very low, because those people have excellent transport choices. And, and that's a real contrast to the suburbs of the city, where we know that car, car ownership is high, car ownership is increasing, and those, those people do not have such good transport choices. So one of the challenges that we've set ourselves is improving the transport choices for other people who, who live just on the edge of the city, to so try and yeah, encourage them to try other means of getting into the city. Richard, would you agree with <laughs> yeah, that? I, th I would to a certain extent. Where I get nervous, and I think perhaps as a party we get nervous, is this concept of nudge, i.e. that you make the car more expensive to encourage people to use other forms of transport. Because A, I think it's, it goes against fundamentally what I believe as a, as a politician, that it's not for me to tell you how you shouldn't, shouldn't live your life and what choices you make, but also it tends to, in the rural areas, lose out. I mean, we, I could talk about public transport, but the government's reforming public transport, so in areas like Brighton and Hove will do very well. 
whereas in rural areas like rural Lincolnshire, we are going to lose out. And that's, that's the real nervousness I have about any of these kind of nudge techniques that, draw, that encourage people not to use their car. Well, if your only option is your car, you're instantly disadvantaged. And that's not fair. And so, we, we have to recognise the realities of different people's situations. Yeah. And, and clearly, rural Lincolnshire is very different from, from London and very different from you know, yeah, urban cities. Yes, yeah. I, I come from a very rural area of Norfolk, and, and in Norfolk, you just simply can't get around without your own car or extremely strong legs and a powerful bicycle. And I, just to cut in there, I don't think a lot of Westminster-based politicians necessarily appreciate that. I don't think they get that for the vast majority, and I'm, I'm, this is slightly off the hoof, but the vast majority of people in the UK, to get to and from work, they probably don't have an awful lot of choice. And certainly outside the metropolitan areas, your car is your only option in real terms and to how you're going to live your life, how you're going to take your kids to school, how are you going to do your shopping. And I think too much is focused, and we see this from government spend, too much is focused on public transport and the rail network and too little on cars, parking and, and highways. So is parking management then a national issue or a local issue? Richard, would you rather, from what you're saying, I take it that you'd rather that councils were the main drivers here Absolutely. and not parliament? The, the, the danger when... National politicians get involved in things that are quite contentious. Is you, CCDV is a great example. There is a real danger that the government will, as they have done with clamping, ban it because it looks good stood on a pedestal, but actually it's then the people on the ground who suffer. And I think something like parking is really well done by local authorities who are, have the, the tools at their disposable to make it happen. Would you agree with that, Ian? Yes, uh, but I think it's a national issue and, and it's a local issue. I, I think it's really important that the national government kind of set the framework under which local, um, you know, local authorities operate and, and implement local parking solutions that meet local needs. So, yeah, I, I think the balance has, has, has to be right. And clearly we need consistency across the country. So somebody you know, going from Brighton to Scarborough or wherever else, Grant, Grantham, wherever, is going to be familiar with you know, the, the signs, the markings, or whatever, so, so they're clear as, as to what they're allowed to do and, and, and what they're not allowed to do. Because I, th I think my feeling is if, if somebody knows they've transgressed, they kind of accept when they get fined. But I think you know, the upset comes when people don't know that they've tra transgressed because they you, didn't understand. And you think perhaps that sort of aspect of the parking uh, issue can best be determined centrally by, by Parliament? I'm, 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 I'm no expert in, in, in such matters, to, to, to be really honest. You know, I, I, and, and, yeah, we're very, I'm always guided by, by our officers who are kind of experts in these matters. But my instinct is that national government needs to set the framework and then you know, local authorities implement the right solutions. Coming back to enforcement, which is something we touched on a little while ago, Richard, if I could start with you, was the government right to ban clamping in no. England and Wales? No, it wasn't. I mean, yeah, there's no doubt there was an issue with clamping, uh, but we are now in a, in a situation where people can t potentially park illegally on private property and the landowner can do nothing about it in real terms. Now, that's, that's clearly not fair. You don't solve bad practice, uh, you know, even a, a small or a large minority of bad practice by necessarily banning, banning a process altogether. Because you know, one of my MPs, that, whose area I cover, is on the Transport Select Committee, very keen to talk about various national issues, that's bad, that's bad. But then on a daily basis, we get from, from their office letters from constituents complaining about people parking carelessly outside schools or outside shops or on their street. And you can't expect local authorities to do things with their hands tied behind their back. But was there an alternative, or do you think it was over the top for Parliament to act in that way? Yeah, the, the, the Parliament reacted, and it's, it, it's a great approach, isn't it? It's a great thing to get, you know, lots of TV, clampers are bad, let's ban clampers, aren't we wonderful? And that's fine if that's as, as deep as you're ever going to be. But I think people aren't that stupid. I think the public as a whole aren't that naive. You know, you can ban bad practice. You don't need to kind of ban the whole process. And I think that was the mistake. Because we now don't, there's a tool we no longer have in problem areas, you know, hospitals, there's a few hospitals in the East Midlands that really suffer, and they are really struggling with what to do with it. We've had an issue with coastal car parks. People just pull up for a week, park illegally. We're, we're really struggling to do anything about it. So, you know, the times like that, you'd want, you'd want a, a bigger stick. Ian, is that fair? Do we need a big stick even if we carry it softly? <laughs> 
whatever, whatever measures we have need to be effective. So yeah, if the measures are not effective, yeah, there's no point in having them, whether it's a stick analogy or, or whatever we like to call it. Whatever, whatever we're trying to, yeah, the measures we're trying to use have to be effective and have to work. So do you think it was wrong then to ban clamping? I think it probably was. Uh, again, it's not something that we directly use as a lo local highways authority, even though I think our housing estates did use them. Uh, and I think they, they really have a problem now. Uh, so I, I sometimes get residents on, on some of our estates contacting me about their frustration with people who were just abusing the system because you know, sort of our, uh, our estates are in the centre of the town. People know they've got a very good chance that they can get away with just going on this estate parking, going doing the shopping and going and, and depriving somebody who well may be desperately in need of that parking space because of a disability or something, access to the private parking space that they actually pay for. So yes, I, I, we need effective measures. You would agree with that, Richard? I, I would. It's, uh, it, it's a classic case of you, you, you kind of, you're solving a problem that doesn't necessarily exist to the scale it does. And there are some now isolated areas, clearly in Brighton Hove, although I must declare an interest, I've been clamped in Brighton and Hove once. So not I'm not, yeah, no, I'm not burying any grudges. <laughs> you have to clamp them back. Yeah, so do come up to Lincolnshire, won't you? But it is, it, there is a tool there. I think maybe the industry has to look at, its, look at the way it handled itself. But we see a really marked difference this morning from the minister. You know, a year ago, 12, 24 months ago, there was a lot of talk, we're going to ban CCTV like we banned uh, clamping. And I think it's pretty clear that's not going to happen now, maybe forced to eat my words. So I think they've picked up on the fact that these knee-jerk reactions aren't necessarily the way forward. You were saying earlier that you felt that, well, I think there's a sense from both of you that some people, given an inch, will take a mile and you just need to have that extra draconian uh, control if you need to use it. But somebody I know just after the minister's talk a little earlier this morning was saying that really education Public education is, a, is, is what it's about, with the inference that a lot of parking infringement is accidental or because people didn't quite understand what they could or should do. Which one, in your experience, is the correct model? Is it people get away with what they can or is it people just don't know what they can, need to do? I think, having been out with our enforcement officers a few times, there's an awful lot of people who, when confronted with the ticket, claim they didn't understand and you kind of wonder how many times they've not understood it in the past and conveniently so. There is a degree of education. I think there does come a point where you, you can't take on all the responsibility. If, if somebody's not prepared to you know, be aware of the highway codes, be aware of the signs around them. You know, we've, we've given people parking tickets as we've stood next to the sign that says you can't park here for more than 30 minutes. So we say, I didn't see the sign. Well, at what point do you say, you know, when you park, if you're not sure what the regulations are, you might be well served, just have a quick look round. Ian? Absolutely. Yeah, I, mean, I think ed education is important. I mean, particularly about parking on pavements, for, for example. So I think people sometimes choose to, I choose to ignore the consequences of their actions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we have a lot of contact with disability groups. I, I did a, a, a blindfold test with the, um, the Guide Dogs Association a little while ago, which, which involved go going out, going out uh, with a dog, uh, with, with a stick, and, and, and blindfolded. And, and you yeah, know, if more pe I think it'd be good for more people to appreciate actually the impact that parking on pavements do does. You know, pa pavements in many urban areas are quite narrow. You start narrowing them down by parking on them just because they want to pop into a shop because that's okay, isn't it? Well, no, it's not okay actually because, because yeah, so somebody may well suffer yeah, very, very seriously because of the consequences of that action. So I, 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 what, fear, you know, what, what concerns me about the general debate around parking is who's driving that debate, you know, whose voices are we hearing the loudest, and it is not the, the voices of the disadvantaged, it is, it is not the voices of children, it is not the, the, the voices of the disabled, and, I'm, I'm, and you know, I think it's a very loud minority voice which is having a disproportionate view on national impact I, on national I debate. I take your point there, Ian, but if I can just cite from my own experience, living in a small market town in Norfolk. Um, we always had uh, enforcement officers, traffic warden, whatever you like to call them, until uh, a couple of years ago when due to the cuts, uh, that post was made redundant. And after an initial flurry of bad parking, actually people became self-regulating. And the parking to that town, in that town to this day, is actually not too bad. And yet there's nobody cracking the whip anymore. Isn't there a danger that councils almost by 
I can't avoid the trap of being pro-parking regulation when, in fact, a little bit of laissez-faire curiously can pay off. Our experience in Lincolnshire was quite the opposite to that, that having gone for a significant period of time, probably six or seven years with no enforcement, that it really had deteriorated. And I think in particular on the east coast of, of Lincolnshire, not unlike Norfolk, where tourism is very important, where you had people coming into the area, it did become a little bit of a bloodbath with people just getting out their car and abandoning them. And that frustrates the locals uh, and it, it makes things very difficult. So I think I agree with you, most instances, government regu regulation, we don't need it, we can do away with it, people are quite sensible. But this, it, because the, the ability for a small minority of selfish people to have such a massive impact on everybody else is where it falls down. You know, in your little market town, if you had half a dozen people who frankly park wherever they like with no thought to anybody else, you would see all the market town come to a grid, gridlock, you know, parking out opposite each other on narrow junctions, that kind of thing. And, and that's where it breaks down. Yeah. Well, I think it's about the supply and demand, isn't it? And, and, and you know, uh, public space is of, very, it, it's of very limited supply in somewhere like right now, you know, the Norfolk town and, and may be very different. Uh, but yeah, that, that, uh, it really has to be managed. I mean, there's real examples in Brighton Hove where there's a controlled parking zone right next to a non-controlled parking zone because residents there have chosen that they don't wish to be part of it. And you can see absolute mirror images or you know, contrasted images of each other. On one side of the road is a very civilized area where children and even adults are played in the streets. On the other side is absolute chaos, parking on the pavements, parking on the corners, and you know, cars circulating around for almost non-existent parking spaces. So for us, you know, it, for me personally, it's very much about civilizing the streets and trying to create a livable city. And we need to, c together, sh share the, the very limited resources that we have available for that. Thanks for that. Now, it's, it's interesting, I mean, because we've only just got your two political points of view, I'm conscious that there are also Labour labor and uh, Liberal Democrat uh, opinions on this. So what I'd like to do at this stage, if we may, is to throw the discussion open to the floor. If somebody would like to ask questions of our panellists or indeed make points, I think that would be a valid contribution to the discussion, if that's mm, okay with you absolutely. guys. If you'd like to shout out, uh, have we got a roving mic? We've got a roving mic, actually, which will help. Speak quite closely to it. Hi, um, <laughs> I'm David Malone from Newcastle Hospitals. Uh, just a view on party um, discussions around hospital parking charges, because there's a, there's a big push to have hospital parking charges abolished in England, as they've done in Wales and Scotland. Uh, just a general view on that. Um, well, I can't help see a, a, a certain irony in, in, in a health centre in, 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 in encouraging people to drive to it. Um, but I, th I think it's a, a, again, I think it needs a local solution. It's, 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 it's not something that, that needs a national solution. It's, yeah, it needs a local solution. So, so yeah, in Brighton Hove, yeah, we have a very, very big uh, regional hospital in one of the most densely populated and the most difficult areas of the city to access, so which has got excellent public transport to it. So in that instance, I hope very much that the, the health authority will continue to charge for that resource because we can't afford for them not to. But yeah, in the rural areas, I'm sure it's very, very difficult because we can't yeah. deny people access to the hospital. It's extremely contentious. Uh, a number of our hospitals, I mean, the NHS is generally very, very worrying in Lincolnshire anyway, but the parking issue comes up time and time again. And I think there is a real danger that we will get another national approach to it, rather than saying what works in a local area. Because of course, the moment you say to a, a, a health trust, okay, you're not gonna get your two million pounds a year from parking, it, it, it's unlikely that that was going into a slush fund that was being spent on champagne. Somewhere else, that money's gonna have to be made up from. And that's, that's the real danger. When we make these reactionary kind of big statements that we don't think it necessarily through. But the problem is the NHS, and I know it's very complex who is who, are not helping themselves when they are, you know, frankly, very good at running car parks and, and pretty expensive with it as well. Okay, I think we've got a contributor over there. If we could perhaps pass the microphone on. Could you speak nice and clearly? So yeah, what thank you. Um, not so much of a question. I was just going to... Uh, make reference to comments on, on the, the political dimension that you're entering into. I'm currently, uh, I'm Councillor Jamie McRae, I'm currently Chairman of Patrol, which of course represents 308 local authorities in England and Wales um, who have civil enforcement powers. Um, I would say that our executive committee, which is made up normally of about 20 authorities, 
across England and Wales, very cross party, and, and Ian actually sits on our, our executive. Um, in response to the recent Transport Select Committee's consultations, I would say we had a very consensual view on our approach to both parking strategies and enforcement strategies, bearing in mind that the, di the diversity of rural and urban issues which are well brought out in the discussion. So I just want to take the opportunity that, um, apart from one or two particular issues, sometimes on the bus lane side, that uh, quite clearly um, the, the, the challenges um, and the, the uh, implications of enforcement strategies are um, well discussed and I don't feel it's particularly a political issue in the sense of, of party politics. Okay. There, there are local issues in terms of local party politics but quite clearly that's a... Uh, How important uh, an issue do you think parking will be at the national election? I mean obviously there are other issues on the, on the table but do you think it will figure as something that, that will determine people's vote? Well, I think it, it may be fairly interesting in, in the next round of elections in 2015 because, of course, many authorities, I, I represent a large unitary authority, there will be all-out elections, both at the same time as the national elections and local elections. That may put a, uh, an, an issue to the fore. But I don't think that um, in terms of some of the issues we've talked today about, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a wide diversity in the approach. I think just on that, it's, yeah, for, just, I think for some constituencies it's going to be a really big issue. So I don't see it necessarily as a national parking agenda. I don't think David Cameron's going to be talking about parking at a big debate with Ed Miliband, for example. But I think there will be some key seats where potentially members of parliament on all sides who think they're very safe, you will see somebody come up. And it could very well be around things like hospital parking. So the, pros the protest vote, which famously is very effective mid-term, you think actually could be significant... At a national and there is potentially you know, a political party out there with that track record of being a good protest party who are good at getting on the back of these kind of issues who may, you know, a cynic might say, want to jump on hospital parking, for example. Has anybody else got any questions or any points they'd like to raise, particularly from the other two main parties, or indeed any party? Any thoughts or any questions? OK, what are you just thinking? If I could come back to our two guests. Um, is parking law now so complicated, so complex, that people don't understand it? Is that, would that be fair, do you think, Ian? Uh, <clears throat> well, I've no, personally, I've no, <clears throat> I've no reason to th think that it, that it is. Yeah, as I say, our experience in Brighton and Hove is because it's well managed and you know, we try to have a consistent approach across the city, which we feel is really, really important. People do generally understand what's going on. Um, and you know, I think as evidence of that is that the number of PCNs is going down. So I personally don't think it is complicated. Um, but yeah, if, if, there are, if there are issues, um, yeah, we need to be aware of them. And, and I think that's kind of where national government needs to come in gently to, 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 to and, and we're working with patrol and people like that to, to yeah, with the industry to try to identify what any problems may be and, and work to resolve them but I don't personally feel there's a massive complication issue out there. Richard? Yeah I'd have to differ my view on that I think I think it is potentially I think um, one of the interesting things the minister said was looking to make it less um, disciplined in as much as we've had the issue with people going around with tape measures saying the line's not wide enough therefore it's not a parking bay well it is a parking bay you know just because the sign is six inches right of where it should be so that's the area I'm, yeah, I was really keen get that picky? Oh, oh they do and you know in, in kind of nice market towns for example where you don't want big thick white lines and you don't want signs every five minutes every five yards and you know and, and we have parking zones where when you drive in it tells you what the parking regulations are we still have issues where people say, oh, yes, but you don't have a repeater sign every five metres. And I think what we need is national government to kind of let the cuffs off and say, let's, let's reintroduce the reasonable test. You know, is it reasonable that if you've driven past a damn great sign that tells you you're now in an area you can't park, that you have to be told all the time? You know, should we be painting over medieval cobbled streets with bright paint every year just so people can get away with being difficult. I don't think that's fair. Point. Yeah, yeah, Thanks, point. I, I tend to agree with that. Yes. Front row there, if we could just um, give the mic. Uh, Caroline Shepherd, the chief adjudicator for the Traffic Penalty Tribunal outside London. You were talking about parking law, and it is much more complicated than people think. And so the, it urgently needs to be simplified. But I think the big issue at the moment that we're experiencing as adjudicators is the law surrounding bus lanes outside London and the, the number of authorities who are issuing penalty charges 
uh, quite rightly because um, they want to manage their moving traffic schemes and therefore we've got to a position and I know I should have put this to the minister whereby the because the powers at the back of the Traffic Management Act in terms of enabling authorities to enforce moving traffic and not enforce themselves, more and more traffic schemes are being enforced as if it were a bus lane, when in fact it's a traffic priority scheme. And of course this is being challenged quite rightly on, and we're having to decide these as a matter of law and it's not really what the scheme was set up to be that we the adjudicators should be having to decide really on whether something is a bus lane or isn't simply because the powers that are sitting on the statute book have not been implemented so th th by you know the government. So as I understand your point is basically that it's down to implementation rather than actually creating the laws yeah and I, I mean I'm not I'm the last put you're the last person in the country I'm going to argue with about parking regulations but I think there's a really valid point there and frankly I don't always think and I, I perhaps shouldn't say this that highways officers have the level of expertise when they're designing schemes that they really ought to have I mean we've seen since we've upskilled and we brought in a team uh, I think goes to the patrol meetings um, uh, we've seen a real kind of investment of, of knowledge gone into the team so when we are rebuilding marketplaces and doing these works, we're ironing out problems that we didn't really know until your office had probably come back to us and a number of people had said that's not enforceable and we're trying to wind through but that's, that's a long term process and I suspect it's not just Lincolnshire where that has that issue. Okay, the gentleman here. Uh, Paul Nikas from Cambridge City Council. I'd just like to ask um, you if you think that uh, penalty charge, the cost or the price of penalty charge notices are high enough to be effective in assuring compliance oh. outside London, what given that they haven't yeah. increased for 10 years? Well, I, th I think the gap between, you know, when the gap between the, the cost of the PCN and the cost of parking diminishes to such a degree that it's worth suddenly taking the chance, which we know we've got in Brighton and Hove. I, th I think possibly the answer to that, to that is, 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 is no. How about you, Richard? Yeah, com I completely agree. It's not high enough. And you are, you're exactly right. You know, we've all done it. We're taking that gamble. And until the, the impact is, is high enough that if you lose the gamble, it outweighs the benefit of risking it, it's not going to work. And I think there's a strong argument for making them higher. Because it's done in some people's minds. It's like, well, I'm not paying a fine. I'm just paying to park. No, that's yeah, a fine. <laughs> yes. That's meant to be expensive to a point at which it would stop you doing it in the first place. We don't want to issue fines, but I know we've got a hardcore people who park illegally and just know that once a month they're going to get a fine. Any, any other thoughts? Any, would you like to have a microphone? Where's the microphone gone? Ah, it's this lady here. Hello, I've got a question that's um, perhaps not so political, but it's about Brighton in particular. Um, I was in Brighton this weekend. Uh, I paid for four hours parking. It cost me £25. Um, as we all know, if you've been to Brighton, it's extortionate, the, the parking charges. Um, I just wanted to know what your thoughts were on, you know, on the charges in general. Do you, would you encourage um, operators to perhaps come in lower? Would you, would you be happy to have more people come and park in your fine city? Or would you, are you happy with the, you know, how high they are because you feel like they deter people from driving into the city centre? Just a question. Sure. Well, that's a, a matter of, of, of private enterprise, isn't it? Of course, so, so, of so we have, we, yeah. Yeah, we, we have our city-run car parks, yes. we, we, which we manage, and, and, and we, we say we have a, a, a co coherent, intelligent pricing policy, which is highest you know, you know, right on the seafront and less a little bit further out of the city centre. Unfortunately, the, the, the private operator yeah, does not have the same policy, and the most complaints we get about the cost of parking in Brighton and Hope are those car parks that are run by private operators that do not have the level of investment as well, because we have invested significantly in our multi-storey car parks. Yeah, I've often said, yeah, we've invested about four or five, well, I'm accused of being anti-car. I said, yeah, we've invested five million pounds in these car parks. That is not, a, a, yeah, that is not the action of an anti-car authority. It's one that recognizes the value of safe, secure parking, which is what we do. Unfortunately, the private operator in, in the city does not have the same approach. And it's a real problem because it, it, it gives the city a bad name. Richard? 
Wow, that's expensive, isn't it? Um, I, I think that I would have a different response to that. I, I, so I wouldn't want to regulate private car parks. What I'd be saying to, as a local authority is we need to compete with them and allow the free market to drive down the price. So in essence, what in some ways you want to do is make it easier to open car parks up so you're then naturally going to push the price down. Because what you see with that kind of policy, and we don't get quite that high in rural Lincolnshire, I think that the, the, the locals would be revolting. We'd have pitchforks on the streets. But as you do say, you know, and I can think of it just off the A1 near Grantham, not well, far from where I live, you can go into Grantham and park, and they brought the parking pay cost down, but it used to be five or six pounds for a few hours parking, or you can drive to the bottom of the hill, big car park, out of town shopping center. And the evidence is clear that if it's simple and easier, not so much about the cost necessarily, people will, you, we're just driving people out of our towns and cities if we're not careful. Can I say something else about it? Yes, do it. So, um, yeah, as a minority administration, we, yeah, we don't dictate exactly what happens in the city. And we, we have had some free parking events imposed on us by, by, the, uh, by, by the other parties, particularly in the run-up to Christmas, which we, we felt was not it, particularly the sensible time to do it. But anyway, the four Saturdays in the run-up to Christmas, we had free parking in a number of the city centre car parks. And, and but it was really telling the impact that had upon people's parking behaviour. And it was almost nil because yeah, the, so the, the car parks that were free because people didn't want to go to them, people still didn't want to go to them. So yeah, and, and there was a real evidence that actually it's not the cost of parking that is the real determinant as to where people will park. It's whether they, they want to go there or not and the quality of parking when they go there. Because we had the bizarre situation where free car parks were still empty and p the paid car parks, the premium paid car parks still had queues for them in the Saturdays before Christmas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other points? Any other thoughts? I suppose um, one, I was sort of probably starting to wrap things up a bit now. We've discussed most aspects of parking, but I think I'm going to be a little bit um, of an argent provocateur here and say what everybody seems to be talking about is parking almost as a method of social control. And yet there's, a, uh, there's a, a, another argument that we should be making parking more consumer orientated, people feeling that they're in charge of the parking process rather than being part of a social experiment. What would you say to that accusation here? Well, I think there's a number of things we need to consider. What is parking for and who is it for? And, and, and is, is, it, yeah, is it about consumers? Or is it about uh, other, other actors? <laughs> so yeah, in Brighton Hope, it's, it's, yeah, it's very much about the people that live in the city centre, that the, the suffer the consequences of other people's transport choices. So I think we have to balance all, all, all those things together. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's about achieving a balance, really. Richard? It's interesting. We've got, in one of our tourist resorts on the East Coast, an issue arise where a group of shopkeepers are complaining about where a car park is or isn't because it's detracting from people coming to, their, to, to visit their, their shops. Now, as a Conservative, my view is, you know, people are free to go wherever they like, and it's not for me to dictate to people you will park there so that you have to walk past those shops because you then, yeah, this is perhaps where there's maybe a fundamental disagreement, because you are then really socially controlling people and you are nudging them in down one route, and it's not for me as a politician to do that. But what, I am, what we should be doing is if, if people want to park in a town centre, and they certainly do in rural, in rural areas, and even in bigger areas, they do in Brighton. Some people want to park in Brighton, don't they? Uh, including yeah, this lady who, who took out a mortgage to pay for a parking space. Um, so what we should be doing is, if that's the need, we should be fulfilling that need in the most cost-effective and fair way, we shouldn't be saying, well, actually, we're going to ramp up the cost to make it more difficult to push you into another mode, or we're going to close the car parks down because we don't want you parking there. If individuals want to park there, then we should facilitate it. It's not for us to dictate how people live their lives. Thank you very much indeed, gentlemen. Any other questions or any other points from the audience? OK, I think we've pretty, pretty much hammered out the issue uh, politically. It's a shame we didn't have any representatives yeah. from the other main parties. But uh, thank you very much indeed, gentlemen, for uh, giving us your own views. Councillor Richard Davies from Grantham, Conservative, and the Green Party's Ian Davy, confusingly similar name, from Brighton and Hove. Thank you very much. <laughs>